do 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 I'm Daryl Peck. Join me on a journey as I tackle some of the UK's finest carp fisheries. That was epic, wasn't it? Witness my extreme highs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy. Followed by some devastating lows. Should have caught one last night. Living and breathing all things carp. There's a little white dinner plate down there, and they're coming for it. It is literally like the fucking North Sea out there. Staying mobile. Now we're cooking. And always searching for the next opportunity. What a day. Doing all I can to get that next bite. Hell, mate, they're here. We're here for one thing. <laughs> yeah. The big carp buzz. Hello, mate. Hi, mate. You all right? Yeah, you? Yeah, not too bad. How far off you? Uh, about 15 minutes, mate. Alright, oh, nice. Looks mega here. I've never been here before. Looks quite nice. Nice little river running through and everything. Yeah, Kingfish is actually sandwiched between the river. It sort of splits and goes all the way around it, so it's completely surrounded in river. Yeah, no, it looks really nice. I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, you've got a few uh, tricks up your sleeves for uh, a nice approach. Yeah, mate, I'm really excited, you know, it's one of those sort of venues. You, I, I tend not to fish day ticket lakes, I tend to fish syndicate lakes because you get a little bit more space, you know, if you pay your money in advance. But, you know, the fish in there have been in there a really long time. They've aged like a fine wine and there's so many big ones on that complex. It's just, it's getting out of hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been through the pictures, mega, mega cup. I'll let you get on with your drive and I'll, uh, I'll see you when you get here. Okay, mate, I won't be long. Alright, no problem. See you soon. See you soon, mate. Bye, mate. Thirty-one forties in here. So we're at Bluebell Fisheries, and uh, we came here for Masterclass Five, which was the, the no privileges section, and uh, had a really good time. You know, done quite well without really getting into the big ones. You know, had five fish, I think, in two three nighters. Biggest was a low thirty. Really nice fish, but there are a load of 40s in here and I did photo an absolutely stonking one for a guy called Gary Dennis and um, you know that has always always been at the back of my mind you know thinking that one day if the opportunity should arise and I would love to come back here there's um, even more big fish in here now than ever before you know and the water's crystal clear the fish are dark you know they're old they've aged like fine wines and yeah we were talking in the office about where we were going to film for the big carp buzz this year and originally we talked of doing um, Wellington Country Park because that's the syndicate that I'm fishing but unfortunately there's no filming allowed there so we're looking still looking for a, for a UK venue and it's got, got to give me that buzz and knowing that there is potentially from what I've been told by some of the locals here that it could be 30 40 pound isn't it and that is insane you know it's you cannot get across how busy this lake is you know it is uber busy but they are out there and when I've got a week at my disposal you know I th I'd like to think that over the course of the week that if I fish hard 
a really push, you know, a really push. At some point, I'm going to get myself in front of a fish or one of those big fish and stand a chance of catching it, you know. And the, and the thing about this this video in particular is any one of you could do what I'm doing. You know, you can come here. It's open to the public. You could do a week session like I am and, and have the same chance of catching these fish as I have. So, yeah, I'm not going to um, count my chickens because, you know, it is difficult, it's busy and nothing's guaranteed in carp fishing, but I'm certainly excited. The first port of call was to go around the lake and speak to the other anglers. I came across a really nice guy called Aaron. He told me about some spots close in where he had caught and a few spots further out accessible from the swim next door that was soon to become available. To see these spots you needed to get up the top of a very tall tree. I'll, I'll go right you go right first. Go first I'll have a look at it. He's climbing up that rotten tree. Rapido. <laughs> Look at it. Take it easy, man. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be doing it. That is literally insane. Yeah, I can see, can see it. What? Well, I don't think I can climb like that, lad. Chris, it's a, it, they've been feeding on it. To be fair with you, this one on the other side of the pad wasn't here probably four months ago. Yeah. So, so that's the cart that have cleaned that. Yeah. They've been munching there, so there's one on the other side, you'll get that from where you are. Yeah. Big enough for three rods, I'd say. I don't know if I fancy that. Yeah. It looks but a bit spicy for me. Got three kids. Definitely out deep water, mate. Yeah, I'll give that a miss. They're definitely out in deep water. With my newly acquired knowledge, I decided to place a bucket in the swim next door to secure the place ready for when it became available. I spent the next few hours walking around the complex to see if there were any other opportunities going. So when uh, I had the, the big idea to come to, to Kingfisher, you know, you got, you hear 30 odd 40s, you hear, well, you know, it's a small lake, you know, it's, you've been there before and you've, and you remember, obviously you remember the, the good times, you know, when you've done really well. But now here faced with it, you know, you get there, bivvies in every swim. Some people aren't going tomorrow, a lot of people aren't going tomorrow. We're looking at um, a lot of people staying on for extra nights. And it's not going to be easy, you know. A lot of the guys that are successful here, they um, they come regularly, you know, get to know the spots, get to know the swims, and then have to wait for the opportunity to get into the right place and to come down here, towing the film crew and um, expecting to catch a big fish for the camera in a, in a short well, not a short space of time, even a week's angling, you know, it's, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be, not going to be easy, so, yeah. I saw something spook or swirl here near the lily pads. Went 100% of carp though, I'm not sure. Having seen a little bit of movement in this swim, I decided I would set up here, but not put the rods out. This way, I would be free to wander around and I wasn't tied to the swim. You know, there might be opportunities going elsewhere that I was unaware of yet.
throughout the day, I'd noticed quite a few bait boats on the water and typically I'd left mine at home. Maybe I should have brought it. It's time to call for reinforcements, I think. Where is he? Kev Wyatt. Spelt wrong. Evening, lad. What's going on? You're on film. What's that? You're being filmed. Oh, no. Yeah, you're being filmed. I've got a question. Go on. How do you feel about coming down a little bit later tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Why, what's up? I need something. Go on. Talk to me. I'm a bait boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even know if I need it, but I'm, I'm thinking, I didn't even know you were allowed them on here. Course, what time can I pick it up? My missus gets up generally with the kids about seven, so if I said half seven at mine, was that, would that be yeah. all right? Yeah, no drama. All right then, lad, I'll, uh, I'll call yeah, you back. No worries. No, 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 if there's any, any problems. All right, mate, thank you. Cheers, mate. Cheers, lad. With my delivery driver confirmed, it was time to sweet talk the wife. This could be interesting. Do you want me to keep this on film? Yeah, keep it on film. She might say something funny. Unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? My wife's phone number's unrecognised. Well, how about we're going for the unmissed call then? Bum bum. Bum bum? Got a question? What? I've forgotten something. What? And I need you to bring it to me. What? Yeah. No. Are you joking? Yes. But uh. but I have forgotten something and I need you to be awake to let someone in to get it. When? At half seven tomorrow morning. Ugh. Ooh. Well you get up at seven anyway, don't you? Half seven in the morning when I'm in my gym jams. Yeah, make sure you're looking good, yeah. Have you been sarcastic? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yes, yeah, I've been sarcastic. You're, um, you're going to be on the movie. You've been talking on the movie for three minutes, 45 seconds. No, yeah. not saying all that stuff about my pig. Yeah, you're being filmed, you're talking about your little poogie. Oh, great. It's lucky I didn't say I was going to go for a poo or something. You just did? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I'm not going for a pay. <laughs> OK, I can't wait. All right, love you best. All right, love you best. Bye. Bye. It's on. We're getting fully teched up. No excuses. Dropping bombs. The next day, I awoke realising I didn't have a very good view of the lake. If this was to be a success, I needed to find out exactly where the fish were. This way, I could make the best decisions for when more swimmers became available. Spending the night in the swim without rods in the water would seem crazy to most, but you can't catch what's not in front of you. I could only see a small proportion of the lake from here, so I decided to make my way round onto the far bank where I could get a better view. Spending that time looking in the morning cemented my thoughts of where the carp were. They appeared to be in front of the closed swim next to where I'd already placed my bucket. There was no chance of getting in here till Monday, so I retreated back to my original swim. The sky began to clear up and the sun came out and some fish started to make their way into my corner. Every time I walked to the water's edge, like, like two metres behind that white lit flower, there's a little white dinner plate down there, and they're coming for it. Seeing fish so close in was very exciting. Could this possibly be my first bite at the cherry? There was only one way to find out. 
I really needed to get a rig on that dinner plate. in the jungle. Optimus Stealth. Now, mate, they're here, they're here. Bubbling, look, it's just clearing that's head. Oh my God, that was a fish, that was. There's a shout in here tonight, lads. There's a little shout in here. Whee! Lads! <laughs> I think the majority of the fish are in that corner, but because the wind has been trickling down from there to where we are now, um, the odd one has trickled into this corner because we kept the disturbance down. So yeah, fingers crossed and uh, if Aiden we don't get anything tonight, we've got a really good swim for tomorrow. Should have caught one last night. Lots of excuses and no carp are all over me on dusk. <sighs> Guy next to me's caught one. Decisions, decisions. It had been a pretty disappointing morning for me really, but when Gary called to say that he'd caught one of the nice fish next door, it was music to my ears. Yeah mate, we'll, we'll come over now mate. Give, give us 10 minutes and we'll be over. Yeah, yeah, tidy house does. Oh, all right, see you soon. Cheers, Bye. Cheers, On every venue, there is a local legend, and Gary is certainly that. Last time, he showed me up, and this time, he was doing the same. Oh, he's, no, I'll give you 10 for that. That's sick. <laughs> Hold it there, mate. Big smiles. <laughs> All right, I've got you. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm sure between us we've got something you'll be very happy with. Yeah. Oh, mate. Yeah, you'd be all right with that. <laughs> We need one like that. Right. You think I'll help? Yes. Yeah, you're happy with that, aren't you? I am. I've never had that one when I did a bit on here. Where is it? There's one really good one there it is. I like that. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> right, we've got to go and catch one, man. You have one. 30 40s. What are you doing? Gary's fish had truly lifted my spirits and I was feeling a lot more confident now. I couldn't wait to move into the swim that I'd wanted from the very start. Was my fortune about to take an amazing turn or was this just another stepping stone in the wrong direction? 
the majority of the fish were still clearly here. All I needed to do was get rigs out in that zone. It sounds simple enough, right? I've been on the phone to my mate, Neil Spooner, and uh, he's banging on about the Wormsy, and um, just thought I'd give it a go. Just stab the worm within an inch of its life. And now I'm gonna just lob it out there and hope for the best. Could have told me I didn't have my hat on, Lewis. Let me do all that on camera with my COVID cut. Well, you know what they say about the grass always being greener. I was desperate to get up here for, for the last couple of days, you know, the fish have been in this part of the lake. And um, I've come up here and in the time it's taken for me to move, the guy that was to the right of me down there, he's just lost one. The wind's now blowing into that corner quite steady. And the guy to the left of me caught one this morning and I've had a bit of a mare getting the rods out, you know, it's taken a few more casts than I'd have hoped for. Um, it's really, really weedy out there, nastily weedy. It's 14 foot out there, um, and last time I was here I caught my fish on zigwigs uh, four foot down, so I've, both my rods are the same, they've gone out there on 10 foot zigs, and because it's so, so weedy out here, and I don't want to be using sort of light, conventional sort of zig hook links, I've gone in with um, 20 pound braid um, on the zig rig, which you don't really see people do, but a few of my friends have been doing it on really, really weedy lakes and uh, they said they've had no problem with tangles and been catching loads of fish and not getting snapped up, so I've gone in with that. But I haven't seen any fish here since since I've moved and I'm looking at the wind blowing into that corner and, and the guys either side of me having takes, you know, I'm chasing my tail a bit, like almost probably trying too hard, maybe I need to sit and let it happen, but the fish, they have been showing a liking for this area while we've been here, and they have been showing a, li a liking for it in previous weeks, speaking to people that have been fishing here fairly, fairly regularly. So once all the, the this disturbance sort of goes away, you know, I'm anticipating the guys around the lake, there'll be a, a mad marker and spotting session go off, as there always is on most day ticket lake, lakes just before dark. So yeah, fingers crossed, but yeah, I'm not 100% confident. Right, well we're three nights in to a seven night session and um, I'm certainly not feeling really, really confident, you know, um, not sure I'm doing it right. Went out with the zig rigs and there was a lot of fish here yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, but I'm just starting to think that, I don't know, that I'm doing it wrong, you know, starting to doubt myself, which is very natural and this is sort of, you're doing it wrong until you actually catch one, and then you're only doing it right when you do catch one. Um, one sort of swirling doubt in the mind is, on the first night that I fished, one of the, the hook baits was eaten away by a roach, and with those worms on top of the zigs, I'm wondering if they've been attacked by, by a roach, and if they've been dragged off and sort of stuck in the weed as such. You know, it sounds like an excuse. I'm not saying that's happened, but that's. What, what I'm thinking, you know, that's what's in my mind, so I'm, that's why I'm saying it, but the lake has gone flat calm, nothing's jumping, 
you know, like I say, this is the third, third night. Each morning we've been here so far, the fish have been leaping out in this corner, one after the after, one after the other, after the other. Um, but the moment, nothing's showing anywhere on the lake, so it's not to say they're not here. Um, but yeah, I was desperate to get in here a couple of days ago, and now I'm sitting here behind three, two bits of black foam thinking, are they sitting pretty? Have they got a chance? Or have they been towed into the weed by the roach? But yeah, the game is still on. Still got four nights to go and um, there's still loads and loads and loads of big fish out there and it only takes one bite to change everything. I let the majority of the morning play out in hope of a bite, but with a few fish topping further down the lake, I couldn't resist reeling in to go and take a look. Doesn't look great, does it? I'm guessing it's come off in the weed. My hunting instincts were taking over. I had to go and wander to see if I could make something happen. Put that over here. The lock bank opposite is home to some great overhanging trees. There was no anglers over there, and after going round to inspect the bank, I found a lovely overhanging tree, and underneath I found exactly what I was looking for. I've just seen an absolute mother pod of good fish. Um, really nice clean spots under this overhanging tree. Um, I've got to move, you know, I'm really unhappy where I am. Just no fish showing there. Fishing zigs, not sure if they're the right thing to do. And then seeing these under it, it's just, yeah, let's get the gear, let's get over there fast. This is what I would call a dead sir opportunity. I wasted no time at all and got around there as quickly as I possibly could. It's almost like cheating. <laughs> Very naughty. Sometimes you just know it's going to happen. No, 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 parts in the mouth. Someone bring me my waders, please. Oh, that's a big black. Oh my God, that is awesome. Yes! 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 That was epic, wasn't it? That was epic. Oh, it's a mirror. Oh. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh, mate. It's like Christmas, this. Coffee's got me shaking. <laughs> oh, look at that. On the phone to the old gaffer. Happy with I am. Wish I didn't have plastic corn on. Well, this is exactly what we've come to Bluebell for. You know, the carpet kingfisher, they are absolutely black, as this one shows. 39.6, and we've still got four nights to go. It's been slow so far, and uh, you know, you fear the worst after a couple of blank nights, but I uh, kept looking, and uh, after I spotted them under that tree, I knew I had to move. Used the bait boat, got it round there under the tree. It's nice and clear under there, you know, eating away. The fish have been fed there regularly and uh, all the snags have been cut away, so it's really, really safe to get them back. And uh, yeah, I just, I'm blown away with this. I don't know what it is, what, what its name is, but 39.6 of Jet Black Kingfisher. Now seemed like a great time to have a cup of tea and take it all in. 
after spending the last few days struggling, now I was moving through the gears. But just like that first cup of tea, it wasn't going to get drunk this one. The rod was away. Another mirror, you cannot believe it. Swoop. Lovely. That is another absolute cork in mirror. What a way to go into the evening. 33.6, Kingfisher is renowned for its big commons, but these mirrors, they are extra, extra special. And to catch two in a row, you know, that's almost unheard of. And uh, this is exactly what the big carp buzz is all about. Carp like this from amazing venues. And, uh, you know, it just shows you, you know, when you're struggling, the first couple of days, nothing was going on. And, uh, you know, all, the, all that doubt and uncertainty. And it's in a split moment, everything can change. You know, a quick move, into this swim where the fish were, a really nice spot. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed for the night ahead. That is absolutely everything a mirror should be. Yeah, boy. Now we're cooking. With the light fading fast, my main priority was to get the rod back in place ready for the night. There was every chance of another bite, and with the action being as quick as it had been, I could be in for a busy night here. While I had the opportunity, I decided to rig up a rod. This was because if I caught one, I didn't want to mess around. I wanted to take advantage of the situation and put the rod back in as quickly as possible. Preparation in the nation. I checked my alarm and then I was off to bed. Well, 
It's been quiet last night. And having one just going into to dark, I thought there was a good shout of getting another one, but it hasn't materialised. And to be, be fair, putting that rod back out last night, it was like dusky, you know, the water was all churned up. We've been in and out of waders with the, the camera guys and myself and uh, all the mud cloud had sort of gone under the bush. And I just, I just couldn't see the bottom when I dropped the rig. To be fair, I know where to drop it. Um, but having checked this morning, I can see a little pile of bait exactly where I've been catching from. And I can think I can see my plastic corn like about 70 centimetres away from it, you know, probably good enough to get a take. But I've been up there, the water's absolutely tap water clear. I can see that there's no fish around. Um, I'm hoping they're gonna come back in, but while, while the coast is clear as such, I wanna re-drop it right on top of that patch of boilies and um, yeah, wait for them to come in. Look nice. in the tree. Oh, that is a 10 out of 10. That is like ridiculous. Oh my God, that's so good. Yeah, this is just, it's one of the best carp houses I've ever seen. Ninja. Number two is in the um, in the shower room, isn't he? <laughs> Number two is in the shower room. He didn't miss it though. Look, he's just in time. Bottom lip, lads, get there. Just in time, Kev. No, nah. little one, but lovely dark fish. Just in time. Rigs out in the net. Well, didn't think I was gonna get one today. It's all looking a bit bit slow but um, just as uh, I sent off Kev to go and have a shower telling him we wouldn't get one we did the rods ripped off and uh, this is the result a typical fish for Kingfisher ultra ultra dark and just lovely and uh, there's still time yet for another one this afternoon So let it go. Why'd you let it go? Because I forgot I was filming. I was having so much fun, I just, he looked like he wanted to go, so I let him go. He saw him on the bank, it's not like it didn't happen. You can see him go back. Everyone wants to see it go back. Yeah. We don't milk 21 pounders on the big cup, buzz though. The following morning was quiet. Even right up until midday. I became restless and tired of thumbing the news feed, so I decided to have a look to see if there was any other opportunities around the lake. Nothing seemed to be happening though. I spent the day mulling it over, considering had I put all my eggs in one basket, 
I had even found a tree that I could climb and I was hoping to see if they would cruise in. But still, nothing. The day drifted by so quickly and I was left clueless. As the sun dipped beneath the trees, I felt I may need to wait it out for another night. But then, Well, talk about leaving it to the last minute. I have um, been looking in the tree all day and it's just not really looked like it's gonna happen. And then just as you pretty much give up getting your sleeping bag, it was away. Um, not a big one. Looks like quite a small fish, but just keep getting those takes and eventually the big one's gonna come. It's a small one. Oh. oh, I'm getting old. My legs hurt. Look at my socks. My socks. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Fluffy. Fluffy? Having just caught that fish from under the tree and having battled it from there, it was a very good chance it had temporarily spooked its friends. And in this situation, it's really important that I got the rod back in place before they returned. A small handful of boilies would be all I needed to generate one more capture. Now wasn't the time to be lazy. It may be dark, but ensuring I get it back out perfectly was absolutely crucial. I needed to capitalise on this situation. With a little time left, I mustn't slack now. For all I knew, this could be the final drop. That final drop that gets us exactly what we came for. A Bluebell 40 pounder. I wasn't ready to stop now. There goes the Alpha Nugget. Boom town. <laughs> well. Hopefully that torchlight. She bought me a couple of hours in the bag. With my trap finally reset, it was time to have a look at my fish. But I think he had other ideas. Small. Oh dear. Well, someone's a bit camera shy. I awoke in the morning with nothing to report. While perching myself at the front of the swim, I began to notice quite a lot of fish had made their way into the middle. They were cruising around on the surface with their backs out. I felt like it was game over to be honest. I wasn't going to be able to move into the swims that fished this area. Feeling deflated by this, I had to check the snags to see if there was the slightest chance that any fish returned. To my surprise, there were a few fish milling around. I gave it as long as I could, but nothing materialised. The session was drawing to a close, and ultimately, I had to be happy with what I'd caught. So that's a wrap. We've come to Kingfisher to do a week, you know, with high hopes of catching one of the uh, 
the really cool carp that are in here, you know, we're really aiming high, hoping for one of the 40s if I'm honest, but to come away with that 39 pound mirror, you know, I cannot be more happy with that, you know. It was a mega, mega carp, rumoured to be dead, and uh, it was a, quite an up and down session, you know, at the start, coming early, sort of the plan was to arrive on the Saturday, sort of get my eye in, see what swims were coming free and where I was going to end up on the Sunday. And it was still really, really busy on the Sunday, but somehow I found myself in, in a corner with some lily pads and the wind sort of changed in the afternoon and the fish came in. And it was sort of one of those, I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting the fish to come in on me that Sunday evening and to have them boshing on me as we were going into dark. You know, the, the anticipation at that point was, was off the scale, you know. And when I went out in the morning, I had no bait on, you know. It, that really poured petrol on the fire. I was like, you know, I was close, but but no cigar. Got into the swim where they'd been jumping and uh, put out the old worm zigs, and it just didn't happen, you know. I think we were just, just behind, just off the pace, you know, just a couple of days too late. And uh, as the morning wore on, it was more and more evident that the fish were pushing down to the far end of the lake. We're seeing them show, seeing the odd one jump out, and uh, reeled in, went for a look. And when I looked under that tree and see him coming in there, that was very, very special, you know. To, to move, get on those fish, one rod under that tree, crystal clear water, and to see those jet black things just creeping under the tree and to catch, you know, it was, yeah, really, really special. To catch that 39 pounder, you know, if you just said to me at the start of this week, you're gonna get four fish, the biggest is gonna be a big purple 39 pound mirror, would you take it? Oh yes, I'd have pulled your arm off for it. So it's been a mega session. Haven't quite got that 40, but you know, that's another reason to come back and I really hope to come back here again. It's a lovely Lake Blue, the whole, the whole complex, you know, Bluebell is really, really nice. It's beautifully looked after and you know, I can't wait to come again. Anyway, I've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And now I've got to get home. I've got a date with a six pack and a hot bath. What that bait boat's called? The Stealth. <laughs> it's a Stealth Bomber that one, isn't it? It sounds like a farm. Sounds like a what? <laughs> like a farm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>